Hello again. Uh, welcome back by Alessandro. And Abe. And uh, what are we going to talk now about, I mean, what we promised in the last episode, I suppose. So yeah. Dealing with textures. Textures in shade styles. In shade style and uh, GLSL. Yeah. Okay. We had started giving a quick and light introduction to GLSL in the last episode. Mm -hmm. And we want to show how some of these concepts apply to textures. Yeah. All right. Um, so here we have a very simple program mm -hmm. uh, in which, let's see, we have uh, this shade style. Mm -hmm. We should make everything red. Exactly. We are drawing a whole rectangle covering the screen. Exactly, as planned. Now what we want to do, we want to texture this rectangle. Yeah. So to apply a texture to this shape, basically. Mm -hmm. We have already a loaded uh, texture image. But we want now to pass it to the fragment transform in order to use it. Mm -hmm. So how do we do it? Well, it's a parameter. Yeah. So we pass it as we, we can pass do other eff parameters. Effect. We use parameter before to pass time. Mm -hmm. For example, in this case, we can call this maybe text, text. And we pass here the image. Perfect. And so now uh, this image should be available to mm -hmm. our shader exactly. to read from. But to uh, to use it, because remember we explained last time, we, were t we yeah, explained last time, that you can only, uh, the pixel has only notion of itself mm -hmm. and of its own identity through these coordinates that we introduced. Yeah. Right? So uh, the way you read pixels from an image is also by give, by telling which, at, w at which position the um, pixel is mm -hmm. okay so what what we are going to do is we are going to cons let's consider uh yeah this is the way we uh look at uh, at uh, look inside textures with mm -hmm. the function texture we uh, we pass the uh, the parameter which is prefixed by a p right p image right and we have to give it coordinates now is it a vector too? It's a vector too, exactly. Now, if we if you put in a single value, let's see what happens, right? We are basically getting only the color of ah, we are getting an error, and you know why? Because texture it returns a four-dimensional vector. Uh -huh. So ah, and then so we have several solutions. Yes. One is if we convert this to an mm -hmm. RGB or grab the th th these three components yes. from the image. Mm -hmm. The other solution would be just remove this. Mm -hmm. So we are mapping a vector 4 to a vector 4. Exactly. Yes. And uh, then undefined variable p image. Ah, because we call it text. Ah, <laughs> right. So p text. So there were two issues. Exactly. So now what, what we are seeing is actually the color of the pixel that is at location 0, 5, 0, 5. Are, are these pixels or is it normalized? No, this is, these are normalized. Uh -huh, uh -huh. These are normalized. So one way uh, now to cover the whole um, uh, rectangle mm -hmm. with the texture is to basically, instead of hard coding the value of the, the normalized coordinate of the pixel, to use the coordinates that we have introduced before. Right. We okay. had, what was it? Some bounds? CB? C, uh, it was C bounds position dot XY. C bounds. And now something funny should happen. Let's XY. see. Let's, let's be. Yes. Whoa. But now, look at what is happening. Do you notice anything particular? Well, it's deforming. Uh, it's upside down. That's the thing. <laughs> so it's deforming. It's because the aspect ratio is not the same of the image, yeah. but it's upside down. So how yeah. do we solve this problem of being upside down? So let me see. I, I could say here, this is going to be a pause. And exactly. I, I create a vec2, which is pause. Mm -hmm. I make it maybe this. Mm -hmm. And then I could say pause dot dot y. y is 1 minus pause dot y. Yep. And exactly. Now it's upside down. Okay, so this is because of how these coordinates are uh, basically mm -hmm. dealing with, uh, with the pixels. Yeah. But now we have our uh, mm -hmm. the image. Yeah. Okay, very nice. Now we can do some, some funny things that are very quick to do in the shader world. Mm -hmm. And they would take time to do pixel by pixel. For instance, we can separate the colors. Yeah. Like let's have only red, mm -hmm. for instance. 
let's let's define uh, let's how do, how can we do this uh, well we can uh, let's do this let's create a variable called call for mm -hmm. color yeah, what type is uh, it it's a vector four if we are using the same convention yeah and then we can define uh vector uh, le uh let's see like this vector four mm -hmm. of vector three of the texture only the red channel uh like here vector mm -hmm. three uh, vector ve yes oh well i could mean it could be a vector four mm -hmm. but we only take the red channel and then we put or yes yes something like yeah, that yeah yeah we could do it we could so do we it are like only this. grabbing the red channel exactly no green no blue and one by alpha one by alpha and you can see that we only have the yeah. the red and uh, then we could put the green channel into the <laughs> mm -hmm. red component and, and we, see what happens we can see that the, look at the different channels exactly and see what's going on Okay. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we could do also now is to uh, to do this thing. Uh, we could uh, take the say the RG channel coming from the texture. RG. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like this. So now this is a vector two. So we can we have to provide other two components. Yeah. And let's provide the blue component, but just shift a bit the position. Uh huh. So uh, let me think. So here we would read another texture yeah right we need so another instance of uh, texture exactly i put this here mm -hmm. so red and green this is gonna be the blue, blue. but instead of pause we can time shift it by i don't know mm -hmm. some amount exactly <laughs> nice and we could actually make these uh pass the variable time and mm -hmm. control yeah like this is a common effect now, this chromatic aberration. Exactly. We could even, if we want to go further, we can separate the three. Mm -hmm. We can do red, green, mm -hmm. and blue. Okay, so, I, I, yes, and I think I have an idea that uh -huh. okay, it's a very nice effect, at least in my head. So, define a variable that is called uh, T. Uh -huh. Okay, Be outside, outside the, uh, yeah, Va val T, T, var, sorry, uh -huh. because I want to change it later and put it to 0, 0. .0. Okay. Okay. Then pass this variable to the shader on every frame. Or... On every frame. Okay. Pass this variable to the shader on every frame. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is how do we call it? T uh, also? Yeah, T and the T. Then in the in the frame transform, we mm -hmm. can multiply by zero one times uh, p of t p underscore t. You mean these values? Yes, exactly. Uh -huh. P underscore p t. But times times zero dot zero zero one. Okay. Uh huh. Or should we just pass a small number or no? No, I, I think I like I like uh -huh. more to pass one and zero. You okay. will understand why because yeah. it has the idea of a toggle. Yeah. And then be before the effect parameter, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, in the extend in the extend uh -huh. loop, try to do something like a t uh, multiplied zero dot nine. Multiply equals zero. Dot exactly. Nine? Uh -huh. Dot nine. Exactly. So but what happens? Yeah. What well, we are that, starting at zero. That's correct. That's perfect. Uh -huh. But at the end of the, just before the, the or at the beginning of the effect of uh -huh. the extend cycle, uh -huh. uh, put this bit that if you flip a coin, uh -huh. if the probability is below zero dot one uh -huh. of succeeding, uh -huh. set t to one. Okay. What about the, I can press a key. <laughs> Oh, you, oh, if you want to press the key, that's fine. I wanted to, <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, do you want it automatic? <laughs> yes, exactly. I wanted to, you know, to show a bit the uh, uniform yeah. randomness. If random bool. Yeah, exactly. The probability yeah, is very low. Very, very low. Set it to one. Zero. one dot exactly. Zero. So now we should see that the given probability, yes. <laughs> and we can control the extent, we can control the probability, but also the extent of the magnitude effect, which is this zero zero one, yeah, right? Yeah. Let's say let's put it zero zero seven or something like this. Uh, you mean this yeah. amount? Yeah, 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 yeah. Now look at what's happening. Like the 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 shift is going in diagonal. Yeah. Right, because basically you are subtracting a vector two yeah. of the same. Uh, but you could do like vector two of PT times zero zero seven comma zero mm -hmm. and this will, yeah. will uh, this is gls is very flexible so yeah. it allows you to 
I think people w- would say that they does casting, <laughs> like automatic cast broadcasting. Yeah. yeah. Like you know uh-huh. that you take a float yeah. and you broadcast on all the components of yeah. the other. Uh, well, actually, uh, OpenRNDR does something similar. You can add a, a scalar to right. a vector. Right, right, vector and three. that's exactly the same thing, right? Yeah. You broadcast yeah. that message yeah. to each the comp- to each component. So yeah. we could do back to back two. Yeah. If we only want to move yeah. in the x-axis. Zero, zero. Yeah, exactly. And in here, uh, maybe we could do on the y-axis. Yes, and see what happens. So now one channel moves horizontally. And the other one vertically, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And you see it's nice because you have this kind of uh, slowing effect back, which is given by mm. this uh, yeah. 0.9. Of mm. course, you can use other functions yeah. to slow it down. And the larger this number is, then the longer it will exactly. take. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. By the way, the painting is from Miro. Joan from Miro. Juan Miro. <laughs> yes. We... <laughs> Liked it and thought it was a good idea to show. Uh-huh. Now another thing that we can do, we can use. Uh, let's let's uh, let's do this. We can use um, a tech. Uh, now what you are seeing is a texture in its in its literal sense, right? Mm-hmm. We're using the colors yeah. to display colors. So yeah. it's, uh, let's say a tautological use of the texture, <laughs> but we could use a texture also as a, a data structure. Uh-huh. So we could draw a circle in a GLSL as we did before, mm-hmm. and then. At each point, we can change the radius distance mm-hmm. modified by some parameter of the texture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We can uh, attempt to use a channel. Yeah. We could do a f- like a fake brightness by taking the average of the channels, something mm-hmm. like this. Yeah. Okay, just to have fun. Okay, so yeah. let's, instead of uh, the showing call, let's um, draw a circle as we did before. Okay. We do a float D, the distance to the center. Um, we are at C bounds position. We we use that or um, even if it's not a circle. Yeah, even <laughs> if it's not a circle, it's fine. It's fine oh. for for this. Uh, we have the distance, distance between from, these yeah. and back to zero point five, yeah, yeah. which is also another example. You can see this is a big two. Even if you specify one number, it's automatically exactly. duplicating this exactly. for x and y components. And now we want to use the step function. For this distance uh, here, or? yeah, we go either here or uh, you can, yeah, here. If you use step mm-hmm. um, from D, and let's see, uh, define a variable with the radius. It will be useful. Like, uh, yeah, call it float r zero dot two. Okay, and then yes. And now uh, uh, this is a this is a RGBA. Mm-hmm. So at least we I need have to do this. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Okay, so this is our circle. Mm-hmm. Okay, very nice. Now what we can do, we can change R as a function of call, mm-hmm. right? We yeah. can change R and say like, uh, instead of compute, yeah, like the distance maybe, uh-huh. right? The length uh, of this vector. Of adding, ah, because this is- Because uh, this is a float. And this is a, yeah. like the red component. Yeah. So what does this do? Well. <laughs> Something weird happens. Yeah. If I make it smaller, ah, you a, see the yeah. point is that, like, the, according to the color, it's white or yeah. black. Yeah. So when it finds, you know, like uh, um, a small, I, I would say that's what's happening, right? Yeah. It should. Yeah. It's changing the radius depending on the red component. Exactly. So imagine, the, a, a, yeah, a, 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 a ray that starts from the center uh-huh. and then gets stopped. If yeah. the the distance from the center is below <laughs> that, it's interesting because there's also holes. Inside. Yes, exactly. It's <laughs> fascinating. Change change the channel, maybe put uh-huh. it at three. Ah, oh, you see, this is <laughs> the effect <laughs> because we are animating exactly. The, the and three. actually, we could also now use a smooth step uh-huh. to give this more like you know smoothy mm-hmm. uh, version to the. I don't know why I said smoothie, but a step <laughs> uh, with it's all it. lower case. Yeah, it's and you need to change the variables, right? Yeah. So let's do R and R plus 0.01 and then D. D. You can do 1 minus this probably. 1 minus? No, no, no 1 minus the smooth step. Ah, uh, yes. 1 Not 0 minus. minus. Yeah. <laughs> 
Nice. Now we have a gradient. Now we have a sort of a gradient, and we can see that the you know the thing behind. I'm, I'm gonna add red, green, blue. Yeah. So it moves in two directions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's in this way we are essentially using the the texture to hold. Yeah. Uh, some values. And and one thing I've often thought about that is very hard, I think, to often reverse engineer uh, a visual, like shader effect. Mm -hmm. Like you can get really crazy results by just changing and changing your code. Exactly. But then if you try to think, how could I do this? Like, phew. It's really, <laughs> really hard. It's yeah. really, really hard to, yeah, to... Well, this still is not so complicated, but no, this the is further you go... Yeah, yeah, this is not complicated. Yeah, this is this is very, very, uh, I would say very simple. But yeah. for instance, let's, like, before we close, we could... Uh, I wanted to do the... The um, slit, slit canning. Sl ah, yeah, right, scan. right. We will, we will, we, we, yes. <laughs> so let's try do the slit scan. Yeah, which is a very cool effect. Um, I will rewind a bit. Yeah, and just read mm, one point here with the color, just to make it, just to see the texture again. Mm -hmm. And we show here called dot RGB. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we are sampling at this location, which is mm -hmm. pause. Mm -hmm. I wanted to show that if you do pause at y times zero uh, times equals zero one, mm -hmm. we are zooming mm -hmm. in or out. Exactly. Mm. And the smaller the number, yeah, the less you are moving in the image. Exactly. Yeah. So if you put actually pause dot y at zero. Uh, what, ah, yeah, at the beginning? Yeah. So, ah, yeah, equals zero. The, oh, zero point. Uh, no, no, zero, the ah, comma. semicolon. Yeah. So, exactly. So, basically, yeah. you are saying that the same color yeah. should be applied to all. Yeah. The, you know, across all yeah. the... And you're, so, we are looking at the... F I don't know if it's the top or maybe it's the bottom yeah. row of pixels from exactly. the photo. And then we are... Uh, and we could look at the center. Yes. Or, or we could do T. P o. Do we have time? Not yet. We don't have time yet. No, no. we die. We have time. Yes, uh, we passed time. You are passing this other ah, number. We, ah, okay, but we can yeah. use that. <laughs> yeah, we can use that. So it's an animated slit scan. Is it? Uh, yeah. Oh yes. It's it, a bit slow, so I'm gonna make it yeah. faster. So now it's like we look. We observe the through the image. We exactly. start in the, either at the top or the bottom, mm -hmm. and we move in the other direction mm -hmm. at a s mm, reducing speed. Mm -hmm. So we, it's like a fade out. Uh, yeah, exactly. Mm. It's a very cool effect, actually. <laughs> and and um, um, I mean, there is also the other effect that you can still do with shaders that we will call slit scan. Is when you have a video yeah. and you take only a slit of yeah. the new frame yeah. and you put it, you know, at the new coordinate mm. so that you see this elongated kind ah, of... Uh, right, right. So, yeah, you keep sampling. And, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. so, like, if you keep moving, like, you get sampled and yeah. you have these kind of elongated shapes that are very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Very nice. Nice. So, this is just really scratching the surface of whatever you can do with... Uh, GLSL basically, mm -hmm. but I would say that each of us started from almost here. Yeah. Like, and then you learn how to build other uh, shapes. You get more confident about you know how to use uh, these tricks, mm -hmm. uh, like you know type of colors and stuff like this. So it's it's pretty fun. Yeah. Um, you have to experiment yourself and maybe let us know what you come up with. Yeah, it will be cool to see. Okay, but uh, we will wrap this up and yeah. uh, we'll hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs> see you.